Hey guys, um, Tuesday, 10th of May, we're just going to recap, a recap or a cap off of all the things happening in our various sub-regions today. Um, I'll kick off um, with East Asia Pacific. Um, in East Asia Pacific, covered one assessed event today and 22 other developments, plus obviously the special Myanmar daily that we produce. Um, the assessed event today was uh, 17 women being killed in tribal violence in Papua New Guinea and over 50 people injured in tribal violence in the Porgra district in the Inga province. That's happened over the last few days. Um, the homes of hundreds of families were destroyed in the violence. Business and government um, services were suspended in the area. The violence was due to um, issues between the Namali and Ayala clans. Last week, a member of the Namali clan was killed off, killed after being attacked by a member of the opposing Ayala clan. This, this has led to the ongoing confrontation. We obviously go on to assess that uh, particular event. Also, I think it's worth covering off in the Philippines, obviously his old father, Ferdinand Marcos Sr., that was the president of the Philippines from 65 to 86, uh, had a, I'm gonna say a reign for 21 years because he thought he was a king. He was known very much for martial law and other human rights violations and was a champion performer in the corruption stakes. Sadly for the Philippines, his son, Ferdinand Marcos, obviously they had a lot of money and a lot of contacts with the media and the various oligopolies that control the political power. So Philippines taking a massive step backwards today. He's currently well ahead in the polls, in fact, double uh, the votes of his nearest rival and the, and the, the top uh, three behind him don't go anywhere near in terms of their combined vote. Sadly, the media, um, once again, seems to be the weakness in a democracy. If you close down uh, media that isn't controlled, then all you have to do is fool the fools. And if you get a lot of fools, then they tend to vote themselves into an extended lifetime of poverty. And so it's very, very sad to see that um, the former dictator's son, um, Ferdinand Bonbon bon Marcos Jr., is going to be the next president. And that frankly shows the epitome of weakness of democracy, that if you don't enable free media, it all comes tumbling down. It's particularly timely to sit back and look at it and think about what's occurring now in Sri Lanka as it finally disintegrates, where they decided that someone from a political dynasty should be inserted into power for the good of the minority and then everything's run amok. So it's sad to see that Philippines is going down a similar path and a path that it's gone down many, many times, yet between the manipulation from churches and media, it doesn't appear that they're going to be any other wiser. Just let me cap off in um, Myanmar as well, chaps, then I'll have to exit the call and leave it to you. But there's ongoing clashes between security forces and resistance groups continuing nationwide. Uh, one, for example, is between the security forces and resistance groups across the country in Chin State. The Chin Land Defence Force Mindat clashed with the military, the Tatmadaw, near 25 mile post on the Mindat Matupi Highway. The clashes occurred yesterday between about 8 a.m. And, and 1 p.m. Also, Developments in Yangon, approximately 300 civilians in Kalmu Township have been detained by security forces for more than a week under suspicion of involvement in an attack on a Tatmadaw convoy. Also, the Karen National Union elsewhere in the country, along with the Kareni National Progressive Party and the Chin National Front, issued a joint statement yesterday. The statement called on the State Administration Council with, to withdraw from all offensives and to invite all relevant stakeholders to fair negotiations medi mediated by international bodies such as the United Nations. Now, there's a couple of glimpses of our daily report. Um, clearly, Myanmar's uh, not going well. 2,460 security forces have been killed, 6,800, I beg your pardon, um, civilians have been killed, 6,800 odd security forces, and 19,500 have succumbed to COVID-19 deaths. So back to you, Uday. Thanks a lot for that, Paul. So moving over to South Asia, we covered 16 events today, including an alert. So as Paul mentioned, Sri Lanka has um, 
really gotten volatile. The Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa resigned yesterday amidst the economic crisis. Now, uh, the situation is still very tense. There have been attacks and deaths and disruptive protests. And uh, despite Prime Minister Ma Mahinda Rajapaksa resigning, the tensions are not there. And now the question is of what's next. So um, if anyone has uh, operations or travel or investments area, contact us for assistance on that. Now that's a wrap for the Asia Pacific region.